Now let's go one more step ahead and create our currency exchange service. So this currency exchange service, we are going to create one new microservice. So how we can create a new microservice? We need to go to Spring Tool Suite. Just click on New and Spring Starter Project. And the name of the service we want to give it as currency exchange service. This is a Maven project packaging in CR and the language is Java 1.8 form.technotab currency exchange service click on next and here we will select what are all the dependency that we need we'll select web the spring web then we will use dev tools next actuator and a config client spring cloud config client so these four dependencies we will be using click on finish button and it will start downloading the dependencies you can see it in the progress bar so all the dependencies are downloaded now let's go and check we have got as obvious the java folder resource folder the test folder the maven dependencies and the bound file let's open our application properties and give our application the name name our application Spring.application.name equals to this name should be same to same as your artifact ID. Currency exchange service and the port that where we are going to run this application that we have already defined it in the beginning. Currency exchange service will be running on port 8000. How can we name the port? Server.port 8000 save it and let's run the application to check if everything is working fine so you can see a tomcat is started on port 8000 so our application is running fine now as discussed earlier we are going to expose this currency exchange url it will take a from value and it will take a to value so basically this will be coming from a path variable so let's see how we can do that we will have to make a controller and expose this rest service go to the source folder and here we will rename this this is a wrong naming that we have given we will first of all we will rename this package refractor rename and make this from limits to make it currency exchange now let's go on and create a simple controller we'll say this class name as currency exchange controller click on finish let me make it full screen so that you can view it very easily if you are watching on mobile we will annotate it with a rest controller now we are going to create a method which will be returning us the exchange value so first of all you should have a clear understanding of the method that you are going to create so this currency exchange service will be having one method that will convert this usd to inr this from usd this will be not usd always this will be variable so how do we define a variable here will be keeping it like this from and to when you say like you want to convert from usd to inr you will get the multiplication factor as 70 so let's go and do that in our method public it will return an exchange value and the method name is retrieve exchange value and this method will be taking two parameters the from and the to these two parameters will be coming from your path variable how can we take a path variable into a method parameter by giving at the rate path path variable that will be a string and you name this string as a from and you will also be having a to string how can you pass a to string path path variable string to and this will be obviously a get method so you will be giving get mapping and you will be mapping it with slash what we defined in here currency exchange and this is going to be like this from and to now obviously we don't have this exchange value class let's go ahead and create this exchange value class first 
we'll be creating this in our model package and the name will be exchange value click on finish button now in here what we'll be having we'll be having two fields one is a from and one is a to from let's define one more thing the id for every exchange value there will be an id that will be a long format and there will be a conversion multiple to be practical it should be defined in a big decimal format so private big decimal conversion multiple let's organize the imports control shift o now we should define a constructor for this how you can define go to source and generate constructor using fields we should also define a default constructor and we should create a getters for it select getters and click on generate so it will only generate the getters and let's define a two string for it so everything is done and we have to return this here so how we can do that let's for now we can return a hard-coded from and two values return new exchange value and we'll be giving an id 1000 let's say from usd say string 2 will be a inr and the conversion multiple so how do you give a big decimal big decimal dot value of let's say 70 so this will be a l now save this and let's start our application So our application is started now let's go and hit it it should be localist colon slash colon 8000 then change value from and to usd and two is click on enter and you will see that whatever we gave in the hard coded string that came up here so till now we have created a currency exchange service which is hard coded the next thing that we are going to do is this currency calculation service is going to call a currency exchange service and this currency exchange service will be having different instances as you can see we defined like currency exchange service will be running on different ports 8000 8001 8002 like that but currently we have configured only one instance of currency exchange service that is running on port 8000 now we will create multiple instances of currency exchange service and let's see how we can do that let's say we want to run this one more instance of the same service on port 8001 and also how we can determine like which instance of the currency exchange service is called so let's go and do that currently we are having only four parameters here let's define one more parameter in exchange value here private int say port so the port number we will be giving it here and i'm not going to make any change in the constructor i'm just going to make a getter in the center generate getter and setter or port and save it now you can set the port here how we can set the port so let's define a variable which is returning the exchange value and return this exchange value and in this exchange value we want to set the port set port and we can give any port number so currently we know that it is running on port 8000 so we have hard coded and given it 8000 but how can we set up dynamically so there is something called environment in spring boot let's make use of it private environment import it is the spring framework core environment this one you have to import and let's auto wire it as well now we can dynamically set the port so we have set the port in the application dot properties server dot port 8000 so when we check this environment it will take the values from the application dot properties we can say like environment dot get property and the string key the key here is local 
server dot port we have this server dot port but why we have given local because by default these properties are set in the local environment now this is expecting an int value what we can do we can convert this into int teaser dot parse save it and just run the application once Port 8000 is already in use. Okay, we should not start the application. It is already started. Let's go to run the application. Now you don't see any port here as of now. Let us refresh it and we can see the port is 8000. So currently only one instance of this is running. How can you run the second instance of it? For running the second instance, what you have to do? There are different ways to run it. Another instance of this application. How we can do that? You can right click on the application and you can run as and run configuration. So uh, when you run the configuration, by default, this window will come. The name of the application is currency exchange service. This name can be anything. It is running on port 8000. Let's say that just a naming convention we have given and say apply. Suppose we want to run one more instance of this service, we can right click on it and say duplicate. So in the duplicate, we just need to give the name to this one. I just want to give this name, any name you can give, but to identify that it is running on port 8001, we'll name it like that and go to the argument and in the VM args, you can give minus D server dot port equals 8001. Now apply it and run it. Another instance of this application is starting and this will be started at port number 8001. Let's see. Tomcat has started on port 8001. Let's go to test our application. Let's copy this whole URL in another tab. Just change this port number and enter we can see here the application is running on port 8001 and this application is running on port 8000 and both at the same time so we can now say that two instances of this currency exchange service is running now